the Materiel Center, the proving ground for every single solitary item of equipment used by the Army Air Forces. Coordinating the myriad of activities which make Wright Field the vital center it is, Brigadier General Arthur W. Vanneman is charged with one of the biggest jobs in our total war effort. Whenever officers from other stations visit Wright Field for the first time, they are frankly amazed at the scope of its activities. This is not surprising. I myself, right here on the job, find difficulty in keeping track of the constant stream of developments which pour from our many shops and laboratories. Naturally, we have all the problems involved in the operation of any large aerodrome. Planes come and go with amazing frequency. In addition, we have a variety of special problems arising from the operation of ships like the B-19. Foreign aircraft, such as the British Wellington and the famous and deadly little Spitfire, present other unusual problems of operation and maintenance. Weird looking contraptions like the contra rotating propellers on the ferry battle and radio controlled airplanes make you stop and wonder and ask, what next? But behind all these marvels is a legion of men working in dozens of experimental shops and laboratories to find new processes, techniques, materials, and equipment for the Army Air Forces. For example, new designs and aircraft are thoroughly tested in these shops with flight loads represented by sand and shot bags. Tests like these make airplanes safer and better and ensure that our airplanes will stand up under the exacting conditions of combat use. Research in the field of aviation medicine with stratosphere conditions reproduced discovers the secrets of human reactions and behavior at altitudes where military airplanes must fight. Day and night, propellers roar on the test rigs, testing new designs, new materials, new ideas, while on the torque stands, new engines are given the third degree, grueling runs under punishing conditions. Less spectacular, but equally important, are the efforts of the technicians in the photographic laboratories. The cameras they develop are truly the eyes of the Army. Communication, vital to all military operations, are doubly important to the Air Forces. That is why one of the world's outstanding radio laboratories is located at Wright Field. Armament covers guns and bombs and a whole lot more. And in our armament laboratories, we are constantly striving to develop better guns and cannons, more devastating bombs. But Wright Field is not all glamour and glory. It has its prosaic jobs too. Its supply problem is huge. Its administrative task, colossal. In hundreds of offices, the all-important pick-and-shovel work goes on day and night. In these brief scenes, I have attempted to show you only a few of the high spots at Wright Field, the nerve center of the Air Forces. We work here that you may fly with greater safety and fight with greater strength. Warning to the Axis. Deadly mustard gas fills these standard bomb cases, standing ready to meet enemy attacks if and when they come, ready to make payment in kind. Empty no longer, the cases are sprayed a dark gray. Stencil to tell the world what they contain. One hundred pounds of answer to the axis, multiplied thousands and thousands of times. One hundred pounds of HS, king of battle gases. 
Ready now. Stamped OK by our Chemical Warfare Service. Then, on their way. On their way to their temporary home, the Bombay, from which they will be unleashed. For the time may come when democratic governments, too, will be forced to play this deadliest of games. Into the case goes the burster, the explosive charge that will spread gas to stalk the enemy relentlessly. Then the adapter to hold charge and fuse in place. The fuse, the top man on the bomb that turns it from a calm warning to an instrument of destruction. And the standard bomb shackle to hold it till the call comes, bombs away away earthward to answer the axis. Carefully threaded through shackle and arming pin comes the arming wire. Take warning, enemies of the United Nations. Take warning from the words of President Roosevelt. Retaliation in kind and in full measure will be meted out. We shall be prepared to enforce complete retribution. Upon the axis rests the responsibility. As the mounting toll of that grim reaper, accident, keeps more and more fighting men and planes from leaving this country for battle abroad, General Arnold of the Army Air Forces brings a vital, urgent message. Says General Arnold, 80% of aircraft accidents are avoidable. Calm acceptance of accidents is past. The situation is grave. Pilots and aircraft never seen over Burma, Berlin or Bataan are daily being lost. In nearly every case, Disregard of instructions, failure to observe tech orders, flight checks, and weather maps, change a happy landing into a scrap that will never get into the scrap. Unfired guns. Unused bomb racks. These are being lost. Not in enemy lands, but in the quiet American countryside. These stories would never see the light of print were it not for carelessness. Carelessness that keeps Axis nations in the ring for yet another round. Postponing indefinitely the day when ours will be the final victory. Our airplanes and crews lost in training are a definite gain to the Jap and the Hun. While if our loss occurs in combat, our crews have demonstrated that the enemy's loss will be the greater one. Airplanes must fly. Accidents will happen. But those caused by foolish, careless, disobedient, cocky or grandstand pilots can and must be stopped. Save the cockiness for combat. A good pilot here. His instructor, commander and pals rated him high. But now he's a show off. One girl in the grandstand to watch him grandstand. Forgotten now are all the months of careful training and instruction. No need for the axis to pitch a man or machine at this pilot. He struck out without even going to bat. Pilots, crews, and airplanes must be delivered to battle. 
not left smoking heaps in cornfields from California to Maine. Stop the crash truck from being a common sight in America. Planes and crews are made to ride the skyway, not the highway. To commanders, weed out the incompetent and weak. Eliminate the disobedient. Discipline the careless. Retain hard, fearless, disciplined men. To pilots, self-discipline makes men unafraid to fight, die, or turn back. Let the enemy see your bravery. The Air Forces know of it. From Chinook, Flying Tigers, through Bataan, Wake Island, and the Solomons, these boys, the hard, the disciplined, the fearless, are delivering knockout body blows to blitz-bent bombers and making zeros add up to just that. History's pages will be filled with records of their courage and daring, filled with heroic accounts of their deadly accuracy in fierce combat. And as important as the crews above are the crews below, the men below who keep them up. As General Arnold says, to crews, mechanics, and sentinels on guard, only through your efforts can the job be done. To every man in the Air Forces, I pass these words. The responsibility is yours. The job is yours. Do it. Airmen, heed these words of General Arnold and keep it flying.